Hey everybody, this is alias Chuck Finley with Talking Whatever Wednesday. I'm on here right now with MC Tune from YouTube. Um, gonna discuss a little flat earth with him and maybe figure out why these people think the earth is flat. <laughs> Hi there. <laughs> uh, Tune, take it away. Uh, t I'd like to hear more about you before getting into anything. Okay, well, I uh, stumbled into this silly flat earth idea uh, because I was uh, watching science-themed videos and YouTube uh, was fooled by the Flat Earthers into thinking that their content was pro-science. So eventually I ran into some of their nonsense and uh, that's what eventually got me going back in about 2018. Okay. I, uh, I was on some online forums for a while, I did a YouTube video uh, that took off kind of quickly and um, I've been doing live debates on YouTube with Flat Earthers for about three and a half years every Tuesday on my MC Tune live channel. Yeah. I, I've watched probably at least 80% of your videos, to be honest. Oh, wow. And, and I can get through at least 80% of each video <laughs> before it just relegates to just nonsense stuff from people, you know? It's, it's really incredible. Yeah, they... They don't think straight, so it's it's always uh, entertaining to try to get them to uh, trap themselves in a corner. So, have you um, oh, um, let me just back up for a second. Uh, so, you, so you just kind of stumbled upon everything, really, and just jumped into the community. Yeah, it was. It's probably similar to how a lot of people find it. Is is somewhere they see that people still think the Earth is flat, even though. You know, it's pretty easy to figure out that uh, the sun could never set if the earth were flat. You know, it, it was something back before fast communication and before figuring out that nighttime for you means is still daytime for somebody else. But it's been a few thousand years since people figured out that daytime happens all the time. And uh, so the sun could never set. But uh, the flat earthers, they just... They don't get it. Now, have you convinced any of them, you know, of th the truth with the evidence, you know? I mean, have they, have, has anyone been like, you know what, man, you're right. I have had some people, typically they privately contact me, uh, emails I, I've gotten through my website and, and some through Facebook saying, you know, I was on the edge or I looked into things and, you know, your videos were part of my journey out. So yeah, I have. The people that I debate, no, I, I don't have that as one of my goals. I think there's this, this defense mechanism that you tend to have when you're debating that you kind of dig your heels in more. And I think that happens with people. So I, I, it's not my goal either. I, what I'm trying to do is shine a spotlight on how dumb Flat Earth is. <laughs> and, and if somebody maybe is on the fence and watches it, they might see, oh, man, this Flat Earther is dumb. And and then run away from Flat Earth and start laughing at it like we do. So that's my goal. Okay, okay. Um, ha has any, like... All right. I'm sorry, I'm not really prepared right now. I'm just jumping in, like, like you know, from a second ago. Um, so... Have have you when you challenge someone you know to come onto your show for a, a discussion or debate? What's the usual response from the average flat earther? Are they like, you know, wh what happens there? Well, I've I've gotten kind of good at fishing out the ones that are likely to come on. It's usually Facebook, and I'm in all of the groups, all the flat earth groups. And if I see somebody that's in there talking pretty aggressively then I'll invite them because if they're not very aggressive or they're just kind of quiet then it's, I know it's not likely so they need to I, I kind of challenge like oh you seem to know a lot how about uh, you know can you stand up to your 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 proofs in quotes your proofs. To, uh, to a live a live face-to-face -face debate on YouTube and Maybe half of them that I've already kind of pre-selected, maybe half will accept. The other half will run away, never answer, too busy, uh, 
or say, well, we can do it right here, or things like, uh, well, somebody else already totally smashed you, so no. -uh. Um, it's just a defense mechanism for them, and I get it. They're not going to come on, so I just leave uh, that yeah. person alone. I love the no -uh. That's the that's the greatest argument of all I've ever gotten that, from anyone. That is their favorite, yes. Uh, I, I get that from you know, creationists and flat earthers at the same time. It's the same argument. Nuh uh, you can't prove your side. You can't prove that I'm wrong. Well, yeah, yeah. We, you know, the evidence is there. You know. Yeah, and it, it, it always comes with the misunderstanding of science and uh, a complete lack of the ability to do any math. Um, because basic geometry, stuff that you'll learn in middle school, you can figure out, well, the, the angle of the sun would never get, you know, to zero. It could never cross the horizon. No matter how far away it is, no matter how low it is in the sky, right? If it's only, you know, six miles up, like some of them claim that it's in the clouds, that the sun's in the clouds. Of course, you'd see it then moving past you at a thousand miles an hour. It wouldn't stay still in the clouds. They missed that one. But yeah. even if it were six miles, it still would never cross the horizon. It would still stay above the horizon. And they, they just can't get that basic geometry so it requires them to not have that understanding already coming into it. And, and if the sun was that close, they could test their statement of the, the thousand mile an hour thing, you know? Like, yeah, well, like, it'd like be a lot go, of them used... yeah, it'd be going through, you'd hear sonic booms. Uh, and if it was that low, you could go to it, you know, you could take a helicopter or a, a, a drone to go up to it. Same thing with the moon there. Right? They claim the moon is within the clouds. Well, and they also deny that we landed on the moon. Well, if it's in the clouds, it must not be hard to get to. The uh, I, the moon is a great one too. They, they, they'll they jump from one thing to another, you know, just moving the goalpost all the time. And like every video I've ever seen of you interacting with one or FTFT inter interacting with one, you know, so many people with the same no, non arguments really it's for me just watching i'm like guys what are you talking about <laughs> they yeah they get super confident because they've watched so many hours of videos and and the videos of from the flat earthers are all the same they all overlap in their basic entry to it so once you know there's this confirmation bias that once you've heard the same thing several times from different people you start to think it's more true it's i think it's a susceptibility we all have yeah and so when they've watched you know they watch so many hours they they the story is always the same from them too they're like well i i first heard of it so then i watched some more videos which means they spent weeks watching it constantly watching videos from all the different flat earth youtube channels and then i couldn't debunk it well couldn't debunk it means they watched more videos and all of their uh, arguments from their non-scientific and non-mathematical position were answered you know like well how does the sunset perspective oh yeah perspective well, one word doesn't actually answer it you can test that but these people don't have the mathematical inclination to test it so that's their story and they 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 watched all these videos and they get kind of confident thinking, well, I know all of the, the rebuttals. I know all of the information. I can, I can totally smoke all these people. Well, then they come to me and I've heard all of their stuff before. And I, I know what they're going to say before they say it. So, uh, it's kind of fun because sometimes I'll even, I'll even like in the comments, I'll type it in if they're safe <laughs> before they say it. Or people in the comments, they know too. They know what's going to happen. So uh, their hubris and their confidence is what brings them on. And it's weird to see people that have no idea what they're talking about have so much confidence. Like they'll come on discussing, you know, whatever math they think proves their side. And well, they really have, you know. I've, oh, go ahead. In three and a half years, I've never had anyone actually present math. Nobody, they, none of them can even touch math. Nobody ever brings math with it. No. Okay. 
that's one yeah okay yeah if i think back i haven't seen anyone be like all right here's the numbers for this x y and z yeah because you know, if the earth were flat it would be really easy to measure the height of the sun because we right. know where the sun is at any moment you know this the sub solar point on the earth is known it, it wasn't known 2000 years ago but it's been known for many centuries so like on the equinoxes it's over the equator well how far are you from the equator okay you know that straight line distance and you know the angle to the sun it's easy to measure and with those two pieces of information and then knowing that uh, from that straight line distance to the subsolar point straight up to the sun's 90 degrees we can make a triangle angle side angle and you can get the height of the sun and i've done that and the problem is that you can do that from multiple locations and you get a different height of the sun well that ruins flat earth but then you can keep going and testing other things. You can say, all right, well, if the sun's that high, then at, you know, six hours later, 12 hours later, it should be this high because we know where the sun is, but it's not, it doesn't work. The sun would never set and it would be significantly above the horizon, but they don't get that because they can't do the math. So, um, have you done experiments on to, you know, proving that the earth is not flat proving the curvature of the earth uh well not proving in reality i mean i mean, I mean yeah. confirming confirming yeah it. you can confirm uh, you can falsify yes. <laughs> uh but in reality there's no such thing as actual proof it's right. uh it, the, the strict meaning of the word some people meet say proof means evidence well that's fine just use the word evidence then but yeah i have i've done many tests myself uh i've measured the angle of the sun on both equinoxes and both solstices and uh, from that, I can calculate the necessary height of the sun for flat Earth and compare it to other people that did the same thing on those days, and we always get differing results. But if you have in your hypothesis that the sun is very far away, then you can get the radius of, the, of, the, of a hypothesized globe, and they all match. So that confirms your hypothesis and it falsifies the flat earth hypothesis. Uh, they also say it's uh, Eric Dubay's 200 proofs that the number two claimed proof is that the uh, horizon always rises to eye level. And this is how easily indoctrinated flat earthers are. He shows a video with no measurement of the horizon rising to eye level, just, just the horizon somewhere near the middle of the frame, no measurement. Well, it's easy to measure. There's a Theodolite app that you can install on the iPhone, and there's another one for Android. I, f I forget the name of it. You can go in a plane, and you can measure the, the horizon to see if it drops, and it does. It always drops. When you're, when you're at about 35,000 feet, there's 3.5 to 3.5 degrees dip of the horizon. So that's Eric Dubay's claimed proof number two, but none of them ever test it. I tested it, and... In fact, the moon was lower than eye level. And of course, they're like, well, yeah, the moon's in the clouds. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> it, it, just again, the math doesn't work. <laughs> if the moon was in the clouds, it'd be like six miles high. It would be so low always. It'd never be very high on the horizon. It'd never be above you uh, unless you were, you know, near the sub sublunar point. So... Yeah, I did those. Uh, I've I've been to the uh, the ocean and I've seen distant things be obstructed bottom up, but I don't have a high zoom camera, so it's nothing I can document. I can just use my own eyes and I can see. Yep, well there, that oil rig there, I can see and I can see that's close. And that oil rig farther away, I can't see as much of it. It's a blocked bottom up. Uh, so like their uh, their black swan, uh, <laughs> um, yeah. picture with no measurements and no recorded distances to anything. Yeah. Well, the distance yeah. is known. All right. So the black swan for people listening is is their claimed black swan, which which is it, it's a it's a batch, bastardization of of one of the philosophical parts of science that was critical in understanding that you cannot prove things in science and they they totally like stole the name but it's it's this picture or it's actually from a video of oil wells off the shore of california yeah 
and and early in the video you can see from a high elevation that these two oil wells one of them you oil rigs whatever they are the the near one is is close enough that it looks like it's probably not obstructed much or at all bottom up and the farther one is definitely obstructed you you the legs are missing and the and the refraction is is apparently not much you, there isn't a lot of distortion and uh, maybe there is some compression near near the, the horizon which you expect on a globe but then later in the video it's on it's on a sunny day and he goes down right to the water and he gets super close to the water and then there's a still shot of these oil wells where you can see massive amounts of refraction you can see this this um, crane off to the left side of one of them and it's all wavy all over the place so you know there's there's an enormous amount of different refraction layers between the observer and the platform and then the flat earthers they they take the actual geometry so it's math that they didn't do they took it from somebody else and assuming that there's no refraction they give this answer and then that's it the picture shows massive refraction and they assume zero refraction it's incredibly dishonest uh, but then they say well the horizon is is too far away which if there was no refraction it would be but there is refraction so they, they don't but they don't ever do the analysis in this particular video that the refraction conditions are so incredibly chaotic that it would be impossible to actually have enough like temperature sensors between you and the um, the oil well oil platform to get a good um, you know enough information to make a prediction of what you should see do you think they're ign maybe ignoring the refraction in it on purpose or just not understanding it or what or what could that be uh, it depends on who's saying it certainly okay. the leaders intentionally ignore refraction uh, they're, they're in a position where either they're financially stuck, like this is their income, like Nathan Oakley is one, it's his full-time income. That's the only thing he does to earn money. Or others that just, they like having people look up to them. So they're not going to give it up. So they, they look for whatever they can. And I, is it intentional? Is it something they're aware of? I don't know. Um, there's some people that's you know when when you look up what a pathological liar is you see <laughs> that they convince themselves and a lot of these people that seems to fit so i yeah. think the leadership that's their position i think the followers well they don't ever do any investigation the the idea of do your own research uh, I hear you're, you got a... Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Uh, I'm, I'm in my living room and we have uh, five cockatiels. Oh, and uh, this is where my, where my computer is. Okay. <laughs> uh, so the Flat Earthers leadership often say, do your own research, but they never do. It's the opposite. When when I think it's kind of a reverse psychology. When somebody says, do your own research, the people don't do their own research. They very specifically are are like, oh, well, that person was so confident that they told me to do my own research, so I don't need to. <laughs> I think that's their position. I, You know, you could figure out other parts of the psychology. So they're not going to do the research. They're not going to go to the website that these Flat Earth leaders cited talking about refraction and see if it says anything else after the section that talks about um, uh, the distance to the horizon without refraction they never do that have they has anyone presented any argument or um i i wouldn't even use the word evidence but anything that made you think for more than half a second about <laughs> what they're saying you know uh, uh yes a, a few times mostly i gotta say that the flat earthers they think that the flat earth society is controlled opposition and it's like put it there by the government they say to make them look dumb and to the flat earthers i say well you don't need help you do that all on your own but the flat earth society is actually the only place where they actually try to do any real analysis 
So the, the TFES.org forums are actually much more challenging and interesting than the, the ones on uh, YouTube or, or, you know, basically anywhere else. So, so the standard YouTube flat earther is like, no, 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 don't listen to those guys that are actually trying to find evidence. Yeah. Listen to me. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and it, the reason why is because the bulk of the flat earthers seem to be religious flirts. They think that the, or the, the Bible says the earth is flat. It doesn't. And they think the Bible says the earth is stationary. And, and only if you are hyper literal in your translation, could you take that to be the case? So when the flat earth society proposes that the earth is accelerating upwards at 9.8 meters per second squared, which is one of their claims, then the religious flurfs say, oh no, the Bible says that otherwise. So those flurfs aren't our flurfs. They must be controlled opposition. So there's these warring tribes among the flurfs. So it's literally just the, uh, the no true Scotsman fallacy come to life in another group. That's all, that's all that is. It is. Yeah. So in a live debate, have I had somebody bring something up that was challenging? A couple times I had to maybe think a little more, M more about the challenge with them is that they come up with such ridiculous ideas that, that sometimes they just catch you off guard with how crazy they are. And how do you put words to rebut something insane? Uh, how Oh, go ahead. Sorry. So, so anyway, so that's the most like interesting times. Actually, I, I look forward to those things, but that's the most challenge I've ever had is those kinds of, of uh, things that are new to me. Um, do you think like most people in, in the, uh, on the flatter side actually believe it? Or do you think it's, uh, well, let's, let's say a grift for them. What do you think? Uh, well, it's it's been said that there are three types of flat earthers. Number one, the fakes. Yeah. The ones that are not flat earthers are just doing it for pretend. And, and there's certainly some of them, but I think it's difficult for those people to keep up the act for a long time. Right? It, it, most people aren't good character actors or type, type actors. I don't know. But they're not usually the right kind of actor to do that kind of stuff. Uh, and they, they, they probably tend to lose interest because there isn't a whole lot for them to gain from it. But then you've got the, the other two types. You've got the, the leaders, or as some people say, the t-shirt sellers, and then the, the followers, which are the t-shirt buyers. Because uh, most of them have found a way to monetize their stuff and they make money from it. So some make their full-time living from it, like Nathan Oakley or... Um, I don't know who else. There's a few others that full time. That's the only thing they do. But then there's the group that they, they make a good chunk of money from it. So Globebusters and Eric Dubay and uh, Austin Witsit, they, you know, they, they all have a huge amount of their income that comes from Flat Earth. So those are the t-shirt sellers. And do they believe it? Well, people propose that they don't all the time, but I look at how they act and how sometimes I hear words, uh, reports from people that have spoken to them in private and even in private, they act the same. You know, it's not like the, the show's done the, and then they can, you know, they can talk freely amongst themselves and be like, Oh man, that was a good fake show. And we really pretended well there next time, next time. Hey, Bob, next time you need to act this way better to convince people more. They don't do that when they're in private. They, they're the same. They're pleading with people. Oh yeah, it's flat. So I don't think that they generally don't disbelieve it. Uh, I, there are some, I think there's a guy flat earth. Um, uh, what's he, um, Matthew Boylan. He's, he's the original like 2011 YouTube guy but he did it and he admitted it that it was a comedy routine but i think it made him money and so he stuck with it but i have no doubt that he's not a flat earther there have been reports from people that have said in private he acts differently and he said that he worked at nasa and former girlfriends are like he never worked at nasa that was part of the character he created 
Oh, wow. So he just found this, he found this audience, uh, let's say, and continues to, uh, th hypothetically, I don't know if it's, we, I, I'm not going to say it's true, but if it's true, he found this audience and he's like, I found a way to make money for the next hundred years. Yeah. So, and I don't think he makes much money from it anymore. He's a pretty minor figure. Um, the other more serious ones have replaced, replaced him. Um, anyway, so like I said earlier about pathological liars, I think these people, they, they got into it and, and they've, some of them have done actual research and found con disconfirming evidence, right? Or falsifying evidence. And they still, still, you know, aggressively hold that the earth is flat. So for them, is, is it some sort of denial? Is it again, pathological liars, something like that? Yeah, I think we saw that on uh, Behind the Curve, the documentary on Netflix. Bob yeah. Nodell with his, um, uh, I can't think of the name of the machine off the top of my head. Fiber what, optic called? gyroscope. Thank you. Um, so he he actually found the uh, rotation of the Earth with his gyroscope. Yeah. You know, and and won't admit that it's accurate. His his findings. Yeah, and you see, you, you, they re, he reveals in the interview his mindset he's like well this is super accurate and and uh so we just need to get that so we can prove and there's there's the, the faulty reasoning you can't prove in reality but that, that's his thing so he wants to prove that the earth is not moving and then he measures it with this thing that he already said was super accurate and then said oh but it, it gave a 15 degree per hour drift and this is the this is the telling thing he says, obviously, we were not going to accept that. That's the key thing. He will not do science. He has pre-selected his conclusion, and everything that doesn't match his conclusion is automatically rejected. That's, a, that's exactly like talking to you know, a creationist who believes in you know, Ken Ham and his Ark Park. You know, they... <laughs> <laughs> as much evidence as they might find and that you might present they will never accept no matter no matter where this what the source is it's it's boggling to me that's and that's one thing i wanted to really touch on with you like why is it so hard for them to accept the truth you know based on the evidence that's presented versus their side yeah you know well like I said, many of them are religious. They, they tie it. They think that the Bible says that the earth is flat, even though it doesn't. They've come to believe that. And they often will just say the Bible says the earth is flat. But there's no verse that says that. Nowhere. So it's, a, it's an aggressive version of interpretation. So they've built this belief system around it. So it's a, it's a religion. And so people are, they don't want to reject the religion. They don't want to let go of it. It's hard for people. Um, and you know, I, I'm, I'm not an atheist myself, so I, I get that. And I'm a, always asking myself, I think it, it's hard for us all. Is my position, um, a good position? Am I, is it logical? Is it valid? Is it reasonable? And, uh, and I don't think they do that. And I think most people are uh, unlikely to, to test themselves like that. And, and I'm an atheist, but I would never try to talk someone out of their religious belief. I would talk to them about their religious beliefs, you know, perhaps. Yeah. But, you know, if those kind of beliefs you're going to hold on to no matter what someone says anyway. Uh, but I, find, I still find the discussion is at least important, you know, especially in this day and age with all the craziness that's out there in the world. There certainly is a lot of craziness tied to religion. And I, I don't think it's unique. I think it's always been that way. But yeah. I think that uh, communication is faster and easier now compared to 100 years ago. Think about it. If, if somebody did something crazy, it might make the, their local newspaper. But you wouldn't know about it elsewhere unless it was really, really big. I think just, you know, say, say it was 1995. And something crazy happened you wouldn't know about it for three weeks you know now now it's a 24-hour news cycle now with the internet and all the news channels 
something happens, you know, right now. Say there's a shooting right now in Washington, D.C. It's on the news everywhere. Yeah, there's, you know, there's a news helicopter circling above the the place for the next day and a half. So, yeah, it's so the crazy. I don't know if it's any more or less than before. But certainly we know about it easier. So anyway, they, they, they mostly have a religious position, I think, on it. And, and one interesting thing is that the, the gateway for a huge number of them is Eric DeBay's video, his, his 200 supposed proofs. The problem is that all of them are wrong. And they discover over the course of the next couple of years after they become a flat earther that all of Dubay's claims are wrong and they eventually stop claiming them. Flat earthers tend to stop claiming that the horizon rises to eye level and they stop claiming that the map that Eric Dubay proposes is correct. And they stop, you know, almost all of the things that got them into it, they eventually drop, yet they still hold on to the position. And that's a very interesting thing. And they, they wind up after getting beat down over and over and over of the, giving up, even publicly claiming that the earth is flat. They tend to just say, well, I don't know what it is. I just know it's not a globe. They are lying to us. They, they capital yeah, they, the yeah. nameless, faceless, <laughs> they, and, and, and they know that they, that they can't make positive claims anymore because every single positive claim about flat earth is, has been destroyed. Right, the, the the angular size of the sun doesn't change uh, through enough for it to be flat. The 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 horizon does not rise to eye level. The, there's no map that even remotely works. Um, and I've seen videos of flat earthers uh, like Nathan Thompson on a beach doing an experiment with actual scientists, where they show him the, the measurements, and he's still like, nah, no. Just, just now. I don't accept it. Yep. Well, yeah, you have to. And people that have gotten that far in, they, they're not open to looking at things. They've, they, their goal is to support their position. And for a lot of them, it's to continue making money. For so, someone like Nathan, how much, how much money do you think he's actually getting from this? Nathan Thompson? Uh, yes, Nathan Thompson. Well, Nathan Thompson um, stole $800, supposedly, from his friends uh, over a year ago while wow. they were on this this tour around the United States. And he burned, oh, yeah, 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 he yeah. burned all the bridges. So he had been making good money because he was selling his Flat Earth flyers. People would send him an order for 200 flyers, and these people would go hand out his dumb flyers. You can't just get his flyer and then copy it, send me one, and I'm going to Kinko's? <laughs> well, he, it wasn't hard to find the PDF, but people oh, man. people thought they were doing God's work by, uh, by supporting him. Seriously, they really did. So they would have him print them out and then send, uh, send them off. And, uh, well, so he burned all his bridges, though. So I don't think Nathan Thompson's making much money on it. After that, after he he left that tour, he wound up driving to his parents' house in California, and they they didn't have him there very long. I think his you know he's in his thirties. I think his mom's like, yeah, time to time to go, kid. And so he worked at a he worked at a farm for a short time in California, and then he traveled. I think he's in Florida again. I don't know what he does. So he doesn't make money on it. Nathan Oakley, though, in England, it's his full-time thing. So he does a he does a show every day, five or six days a week, and it's it's an hour live, and there's a pre-show and an after show. And so his pre-show and after show, he puts out. You know, there's like a multi-day lag before they're out. Yeah, I've seen those. Yeah. Yeah, and he and he he's you know encouraging people to do super chats, and. He can't be making a whole lot. His videos get a thousand views. And I know a thousand views is not much. He might get maybe $10 on a video uh, on views if he's lucky. And then during a show, he, he might 
he might get another 20 to $50 total in Super Chats for an entire episode. That's his whole day. Does he have kids? Because how can he, he has two kids. live on yeah, that? He has two kids. His wife works. She earns the money. Okay, and, never mind. And he had, that makes sense. Yeah, and he had been doing something else. I think delivering, being a delivery person before this. And so there are people that have been in the inner fold that have come out like ranty. And he said, yeah, Nathan and his wife, Nathan had to earn 600 pounds a month, something like that. And as long as he could earn 600 pounds a month and stay home and watch the kids, then he didn't need to go get a job. So that's probably about what he makes, I guess. I mean, I, I guess. I don't, I don't know what the conversion is to U.S. dollars, but... Uh, it's It was at 1.4 probably... for a while, so that'd be less than 1,000 U.S., Okay, yeah. I mean, okay, yeah. Yeah, depending on, yeah, I guess, where you live around here. Yeah, that, yeah you could yeah. probably... As a supplemental yeah. to, to a real um, salary from his wife, yeah, that can that can do it. Yeah, like, like I work and my wife stays home with the kids and does all the household stuff. So, I mean, yeah, a th an extra thousand dollars a month, please, yes, do something. <laughs> Start an OnlyFans, show your feet, I don't care, whatever. <laughs> oh man i hope she doesn't hear she's not gonna listen to this don't worry i won't i won't say it. i won't tell her um. <laughs> uh, man um <laughs> uh, i forgot what i was gonna say next yeah he kind of he kind of wiped the slate there yep 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 uh i'm not gonna edit this by the way i'm just oh, gonna keep that in perfect it's too funny yeah um, oh, oh, um, Nathan. Yeah, I actually invited Nathan on the show. Uh, I was going to have, I wanted to have him on to get first a flat earth perspective, you know, uh, but he ghosted me. So Nathan Thompson? that didn't happen. Yes, Nathan Thompson. Uh -huh. But I don't know. Maybe he uh, didn't have time. Maybe he was busy. Who knows? You, um, Dave Weiss likes to go on, but he usually likes to be on video. Because he okay. he has behind him his uh, his slideshow he's constantly showing of all of his <laughs> his nonsense. Dave Dave Weiss is probably the most successful earner, the one that's made the most money off of it because he has this app that he sells on on um, for f iPhone and Android, and I th I think it's three dollars, and then there's a subscription too that that I think he, he you can pay for optionally. Oh wow. And looking at, so I didn't do this, uh, Slice Barcane looked at the analytics for the app and figured that there was about $150,000 in sales of just the app outside of the um, the monthly and outside of the YouTube uh, views. So the app is all to drive views to YouTube. And so he's constantly uploading other people's YouTube videos to his channel, just mirroring them and then featuring them on the app. And so Flat Earthers, they're just tickled when they when their stuff is featured on the Great Dearths app. But in reality, so, he's just leveraging their work for him. And as far as I know, this is all he does, and he does well at it. So what does this app actually do? Uh, well, it's got the Flat Earth map on it, which strangely... He says, the Gleason map? Yeah, well, the yeah, as a muffle equidistant <laughs> map or the Gleason map. And he claims, uh, he seems to try to avoid answering whether or not that's an accurate map. Because he knows that you, once you test it, it doesn't work. Australia isn't distorted, super wide. It doesn't look like a hot dog. It looks like a hamburger. And, and Southern Hemisphere flights exist, but he just denies their existence. So he tries to run away from having a map. But it's on it's on his app. It, it has the, the the sun and the moon over the flat Earth, and and it's the accurate position. But the angles are all wrong. The size of the map is all wrong. All everything is skewed. You know, you could never use it for navigation. But then it's every day there's a video featured. So the people that are you know dedicated, they'll they'll go and they'll watch that new video every day, which drives views to his YouTube channel. So, all right. So, does his app get monetized, you know, add more money basically from the clicks on it, and then he gets revenue from his YouTube also? 
Uh, yeah, so there's a subscription. Okay. I think there's a subscription. I, I could be wrong in that, but I think there is. And for the app. And then there is the, 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 you know, sending people over to, to YouTube, which is, you know, he, he, he gets good views on those. I, I think he could make some okay money on that. And then he also, in the app, he has the, the, uh, it's so dumb, the Flat Earth Finder. So it shows the position of other flat earthers. So it's kind of, it's the app leaks your location. I don't think people quite realize the implications of it, but the app knows your location and publishes it out to everybody else. It's it used to have some security bugs where people could access this data without being in the app, but I think they fixed it. I don't know how well they fixed it. But that was that no longer you, can you pull up just a, a blank web page that shows the data from that app. But yeah, you can you can see well. Here's a whole bunch of blue dots in California, and you can see oh yeah, there's a handful of people with the app installed. That's all it is. It's not that they're flat earthers, but of course he wants you to think that they're flat earthers. Uh, funny, they say that us or Antarctica is just an ice wall. And there's uh, been times where there's been blue dots in Antarctica. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's that's awesome. Certainly, no that flat is... earthers are sitting there in Antarctica saying, "Oh, the Earth is flat." No, <laughs> they downloaded your dumb app, and their location was leaked. So, normal guy Steve downloaded his app, went to Antarctica to say, "Hey, I'm in Antarctica," and. Well, there's people that work there. There's people Jeez. that live there year round. So. Oh yeah, it is a research facility. Yeah, there's that. Yeah. Even at the South Pole Station, there's people that overwinter in the South Pole Station. That's okay. I couldn't do that. That's crazy, but yeah, yeah that does make sense. Uh, I, oh, I had a funny thought about his app. Does it use GPS to to show people's location? Of course it does. That is awesome. That is fantastic. Oh my god. And and of course they they deny that GPS uses satellites. They have claimed explanations for it, but no evidence to support it. They there used to be a a location service called LORAN, which you needed to be within a dis certain distance of multiple towers. And and the antenna for it was massive, a huge huge to, uh, a large amount of electricity or energy to, to receive it. And the entire system was removed a long time ago. So they say, oh, now it's just cell phone towers. And it doesn't work over the ocean, they say, except GPS works over the ocean. And it works in airplanes when you're too far from any cell phone tower. I took uh, a flight from Anchorage, Alaska to Minnesota. And over the Yukon Territory, I was able to get my position. Well, there's not a lot of cell phone towers <laughs> over the mountains of the Yukon Territory. Yet somehow I got a really good signal uh, for GPS and no signal for cell phones. Wow. Um, okay. Wow. I, I actually didn't know how that worked. That's thank you for explaining that. Um, so I think we've gone and we're about 45 minutes in. Okay. Um, I just want to ask if you had to give one good argument or piece of evidence to show that the earth is not flat and that it is a globe, what would you say that is? Uh, well, the sun could never sit. All of their okay. excuses don't make sense. If you actually, they, they'll say it's perspective, you know, things get closer to the ground. They do, but only a certain amount. They don't get obstructed by the ground. And also when something gets far away, it gets smaller. It appears smaller, right? So they'll show a picture of a hallway with lights on the wall. But the lights that are far away are smaller than the lights that are close. Well, the sun doesn't do that when you look at it with a solar filter, right? With a, with a, without a solar filter, you see the glare. So it's easier to do it with the moon, right? The moon's angular size doesn't drastically change. So the sun or moon could never set. And there's no amount of perspective magic that could make it happen. And the atmosphere isn't so thick that the incredibly bright sun would get blocked by the atmosphere, yet the stars, which supposedly in their model is farther away, you can still see them at night. Well, if the sun can't be seen because the atmosphere is too thick, but the stars can, you've got a problem. 
Okay. Wow. Thank, thank you so much, MC Tune, for being on today. I really appreciate your time. I know we've gone way longer than I thought we would go. Um, I thought we would go like 20 or 30 minutes, and you've been so gracious with your time. I, I really want to thank you. Well, thanks for having me on. Um, and uh, let, let's just uh, tell everybody where they can find you. Uh, I am on YouTube. If you just go youtube.com slash MC Tune, like MC Hammer, uh, that's where <laughs> I do uh, debates. It's I, the channel's name is MC Tune Live, and I have a second channel where I do pre-recorded videos that I call Conspiracy Tunes with a Z. I'm gonna have to go to that one because I haven't seen that one before. Yep. Uh, okay. Well, thanks a lot. Um, I'm gonna stop recording now, and I will publish this later today. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot. All right.